Well, thank you very much, uh, Karen, and uh, thank you, Craig, and to the Mercury. I won't be competing with Jack Rewalt and the popularity stakes. Uh, thank you very much, Craig. He's a very uh, great Tasmanian, and there are many uh, of us. And can I also thank Gabby for your welcome to country, very powerful, very meaningful, uh, and I love your passion for equity and education. But thank you very much for uh, inviting me here to speak uh, today, and uh, what a fantastic initiative. And any uh, initiative such as this that can highlight the challenges, but most importantly, uh, the opportunities uh, to strengthen uh, rural and regional Australia is to be uh, most welcomed, especially uh, rural and regional communities who are the backbone, of course, of our economy. And uh, the regions support our state and nation in uh, many, many ways and are often uh, underappreciated, as has been just demonstrated, from the miners who are sourcing the critical minerals uh, that we need for our renewable energy future, to the aquaculture workers who are helping feed the nation and taking the pressure off our wild fisheries, the forestry workers who are sustainably managing our forests and plantations, providing a world-class sustainable resource, and indeed the tourism and hospitality operators who welcome and allow visitors from far afield to experience the best of our environment, our unique experiences, including uh, the best that our, vit our viticulturalists and our farmers produce. These are Tasmanians who rise before the sun and get home uh, before uh, the dark after a hard day's work. We know the challenges uh, facing our rural communities, but we also know the triumphs, uh, the innovation and the ingenuity from far afield. And we've seen this highlighted, indeed, through the Bush Summit in recent weeks, uh, with stories such as Caitlin Radford and Owen Woolies, a fifth-generation farmer. Caitlin was destined for a life on the land. The couple got their break in share farming, and now they own their own slice of Tasmania's paradise and are the next uh, generation of Tasmanian farmers. Support, indeed, for our primary industries and the communities that they maintain is front and centre of our initiatives and our 2030 strong plan for Tasmania's future. In fact, in our first 100 days, we have delivered across agriculture, aquaculture, mining and forestry, along with the support for our broader economic growth and our jobs strategy. We are supporting our farmers as they continue to do what Tasmanians uh, do best. Uh, they dream big, uh, they work hard, they overcome obstacles and they build a legacy for generations to come. Five generations of my family have been farmers at Sassafras in northwest Tasmania. And I'm well acquainted to the challenges that people face on the land, water security, floods and the market pressures. And I know their determination. And there's no doubt, as has been highlighted, the rural and regional areas of our state are facing challenges, including high interest rates and the cost of doing business. The Bush Summit indeed heard from Jeefson Apple farmer John Evans about his insurance costs increasing by over 100%. And that story is far too common. We also know the drought has hit Tasmanians very hard, and I've seen firsthand the impact across Tasmania, but also particularly at King Island. And I've seen the impact, the pressures on pastures and livestock and families, the impact on the farmers, the families and indeed the communities and the heartbreaking decisions that need to be made. And I'd love to be able to make it rain, but sadly, that's not in my job description. But what we can do is lend a helping hand this season, we have already provided hardship grants to over 500 farmers from right across Tasmania, including on King Island and Flinders Island. And I'm pleased to announce today that next month's budget will contain further funding to extend our primary producers' seasonal condition scheme. Incidentally, uh, that scheme and that support uh, wasn't uh, spat out from an office in a capital city. It's support that was tailored to meet the needs of those doing it tough, tailored through sitting alongside farmers at the kitchen table, 
walking the paddocks and the community forums and delivered in partnership with organisations uh, such as TAS Farmers, uh, Rural Business Tasmania, Rural Alive, TAS Farm Innovation Hub and, of course, cross-agency support. Ultimately, what regional Tasmanians want is job security, and that's what we will be delivering uh, in our upcoming budget. It will provide $13 million for Jobs Tasmania and the Regional Jobs Hub Network. Every regional local government area in Tasmania is now serviced by a Jobs Hub. They have a mantra that it takes a village, and it's encouraging to see these innovative programs helping people in regional and rural communities. And we're also further developing our agricultural workforce by promoting agricultural uh, careers. And equity and education, uh, and particularly in rural and regional Tasmania, has long been a passion of mine. And we're investing in programs that begin in primary school and continue the education journey, connecting young people with agriculture all along the way. We want to change the perception that understanding and the understanding of what it means uh, to work in ag. We've invested heavily in agricultural schools like the Sheffield School Farm, a new agricultural training centre of excellence in Burnie in northwest Tasmania, and the redevelopment of Jordan River Learning Federation School Farm into a centre of excellence and regional hub for agricultural learning in southern Tasmania. And we are showing young people, importantly, a pathway through agriculture. And we need to ensure that our rural and regional economy is strong so there are good jobs for them when they continue and indeed finish their formal education. Our regions need and thrive on the back of industry. And if we take a very quick glance back at our history, we can map the peaks and the troughs of our towns and the rise and fall of our industries. There's the hydro towns of Taralea, and Watamana. The mining towns of Gormanston and Queenstown, in their heyday, these communities uh, were buzzing with thousands of locals. There were schools, shops, pubs, hospitals, footy teams, and a real sense of identity. But as industries developed, changed, or resources exhausted, the jobs vanished. The town's people were forced to pack up and leave. In more recent history, we've seen this same story play out with our forest industry, where just over a decade ago, the so-called forest deal put more than 4,000 forestry workers out of jobs. That's two out of every three jobs in the industry gone in the five years to 2013. Tasmanian towns like Tribuna and Hewenville dramatically changed. And we simply cannot afford to let history repeat itself. Earlier this month, representatives from, Sa from Salmon Tasmania, including workers, the Robins Island Wind Farm, MMG Mining, each had one-on-one -on -one with the Federal Environment Minister in Canberra, advocating for their place in a sustainable future. Each left their meetings concerned that an adverse decision uh, was imminent. And I've since spoken with the Prime Minister to urge him not to allow decisions to be made that would destroy Tasmanian jobs and Tasmanian communities to appease some voters in Sydney and Melbourne. We cannot allow Canberra to shut down our aquacultural industry uh, and Macquarie Harbour. That's 395 jobs in Strawn, the West Coast, La Trobe, Devonport and more. Gone. The epicentre, of course, will be strewn. One in every three jobs there are directly linked to salmon operations. More than half the kids at the primary school are from salmon families. The impact will be catastrophic. That town will never be the same again. And as I've said before, it won't stop there. First it's Macquarie Harbour, and then it's the whole salmon industry. 150 plus jobs in Glamorgan, Spring Bay gone. Almost 2,000 jobs in the Huon Valley. Another 150 in the Tasmanian Peninsula. And 630 from Kingborough gone. And that doesn't touch the sides of the hundreds of jobs 
that make up the supply chain of that industry. We've got to wake up and realise the importance of these jobs in rural and regional Tasmania and not strike with a red pen because it might appease people that are more comfortable in the bigger cities around this country. Enough is enough. And that's why you see workers from Salmon and all these industries standing up for their jobs, their families, their local schools, their local health services. And we've got to listen to them. Listen to them. Not the focus groups, but the people uh, doing it tough uh, in rural and regional Australia and the jobs under threat in our home patch here in Tasmania. And once these activists are done with salmon, they'll ask what next? No doubt mining. They'll circle back to forestry and that's thousands of jobs at risk and our regional communities too. We cannot let this happen. Common sense must prevail. We must realise where our bread is buttered. The Launceston General Hospital. We won't be able to afford more nurses if we don't support the industries that are a backbone of our future. And that's a passion I expect uh, of all of us and you. Another key focus, of course, uh, of ours, with all the challenges people in rural and regional Tasmania face, accessing proper health services is, of course, essential, and I've touched on that. And that's why we're investing significantly in attracting GPs to our rural and regional areas and supporting our practices to sustain and strengthen uh, their services. And I want to assure Tasmanians in rural and regional Tasmania that we are utterly committed to ensuring you get the health care uh, that you need uh, when you need it. And I spent some time recently at the Piranha Sale Yards in uh, northern Tasmania. It was terrific. But it did make me think about how things have changed uh, with the times. Going back 30 or 40 years ago, the sale yards would have been packed with farmers coming there for a chat, talk about the weather, the market prices, no doubt, their families and the concerns, the things on their mind uh, at the time. A time to buy and sell, but also a time to get things off their chest through talking and, most importantly, listening. They were getting things, of course, off their chest because uh, they were together talking, listening. When I drove into the sale yards, uh, for the, the first thing, I was pleased to see there was the rural Alive and Well Ute, of course, which was fantastic. And Rural Alive and Well provides uh, outreach, of course, for stronger mental health and wellbeing in our rural communities. And uh, don't we need it? Don't we need the support of organisations such as Rural Alive and Well that are out there uh, listening and working with people doing it tough. We are strong supporters, naturally, of RAW and what they do for our rural communities. RAW also partners with Stay Afloat to provide Tasmania's fishers, marine farmers and seafood processors with wellbeing support. But having their presence in our rural communities is more important than ever, indeed, and we must continue uh, to reach out to those in need. Lending an ear and empathising with the concerns and the pressures uh, that rural people uh, face day to day. And that's what I see happening with the Bush Summit. Thank you for highlighting those challenges. Thank you also uh, for allowing people to come up here and highlight the opportunities uh, to be positive, to be forward-looking, which is so very, very important. It's a version of the sale yards where we can come together, talk about the things that need to be addressed. So I want to thank those that have organised uh, today's event and all those events uh, right across uh, the country. News Limited, indeed, uh, the Mercury newspaper. Thank you, Craig, Craig, for giving us an opportunity to come together, uh, learn from each other, uh, but most importantly, in these tough times, uh, support each other uh, through those, those tough times, uh, through the other side, and so we can all grow stronger 
uh, together. I thank you very much for your time. Thank you.